For nearly a century, biblical scholars have placed Sodom and Gomorrah on the southern end of the Dead Sea. Some believe that the Dead Sea itself was created as a result of the destruction. Unconvinced of these speculations, Dr. Stephen Collins, Dean of the College of Archaeology at Trinity Southwest University, began his own research in 1996. What he has since unearthed is one of the most remarkable discoveries in biblical archaeology. Because Sodom is only mentioned in the Bible, the way to do it is to analyze the biblical text. Genesis chapter 13 is the nuts and bolts of, of the biblical geography for Sodom. The more I read it, the more I analyzed it, the more surprised I became that anybody ever looked toward the south end of the Dead Sea for Sodom's location. It just almost began to seem crazy to me. Every geographical indicator that I see in the text would locate Sodom north of the Dead Sea on the east side of the Jordan River. If you look at the text of Genesis chapter 13, verses 1 through 12, the Bible says uh, Lot and Abram had come up from the Negev. They went to the location of Bethel and Ai, which are about 10, 12 miles north of Jerusalem, depending upon where you start in Jerusalem. Lot looked over from Bethel and Ai, saw that the plain of the Jordan was well watered like the Garden of Yahweh and like Egypt. Now what's interesting about that passage is the phrase, the disk of the Jordan, sometimes it's translated the plain of the Jordan. Lot looked over and saw that the plain of the Jordan was well watered. A couple of things about that you have to notice. Number one, it's the plain of the Jordan. And that's the Jordan River. Never ever in Scripture is the word Jordan, the Hebrew word ha yarden, is Jordan ever ever associated with anything else other than the freshwater system of the Jordan River and the valleys on each side of the river. The other key word there is the word that's translated plain, which in fact is not a geographical term at all. It's the Hebrew word kikar. Lot looked over and saw the plain of the Jordan, the kikar of the Jordan. Kikar means a talent of metal. A talent is a flat circular disc of metal. It could be a talent of silver, could be a talent of gold, but it's flat and it's circular, it's a disc. The word kikar also can refer to a flat circular loaf of bread, like a pita bread or here in New Mexico we would just say a tortilla. And in this case you can see exactly what the ancient people meant by the kikar of the Jordan. The Jordan comes down from the north, and it's a rather uh, narrow valley as the Jordan comes down from the north. But when it gets near the Dead Sea, the Jordan Valley widens out into a circular disk. The alluvial plain of the Jordan River creates a circle, a disk shape to the valley. And that disk is exactly what the ancient people were looking at when they named it the disc, the kikar, the talent, the tortilla. They called it that because it looked like that. How do we find the city? One, you use the historical geography at your disposal. This happens to be the text of Genesis chapter 13. We use that text. Number two, we use the, the biblical chronology to establish some parameters as to when the city should have been built, when it should have been destroyed, and so on. Then you do it archaeologically. you got to go, and it's not only got to be in the right place. I always do this. Right place, right time, right stuff. The right stuff would be in the, in the excavation. So what we had to do was build a model. Build a, build a model map based on the biblical location. And that was pretty easy. You draw the Jordan River, you draw the north end of the Dead Sea, you put Bethel and I in there, and you go east, and you say that's as far as they can go because they have to be on the disk. They have to be in the valley, not in the hills, so you got to stop before you get to the hills on the east side of the river. So we're only looking about an area, maybe about... Um, seven to eight miles by about 15 miles. I mean, it's a really small area. There's the target area. How difficult should it be 
to go over to that area and actually look on the ground and see if there are at least four, possibly five, Middle Bronze Age cities from the time of Abraham. What we discovered on the ground so perfectly matched the theoretical map that we had drawn from Scripture that it was almost scary. Many uh, archaeological teams had come through and surveyed the sites and shirted them. And so we had all of their material to go from, and we identified, by process of elimination, uh, we identified from 14 major archaeological sites in that area, we whittled it down to five or six. And we did that on the basis of the ceramics and the size of the sites. So the Bible says Sodom is the biggest city on the Eastern Jordan disk. Well, how would you find Sodom? Amongst all the archaeological sites that existed there, it'd probably be a good idea to look for the biggest one. And we looked at the biggest one, and it's, it's not just the biggest one by a bit, it's the biggest one by several orders of magnitude. It's really, really large. In fact, the site we were looking at spread about a half a kilometer by a kilometer. We actually know it now is about a square kilometer. It's a thousand yards on a side if you put it in a square. And it's really big. And it's, it's so big, in fact, that it, you could take probably most of the other archaeological sites in the area and put them all there. What have we found so far? Well, first of all, when we excavate underneath the 10th century, actually it goes all the way down to the 7th, 7th, 8th, 9th century, we're going digging down through the Iron Age material. When we get underneath the Iron Age, it jumps back over five to six centuries, maybe seven centuries, to the Middle Bronze Age. There's a huge gap. I mean, we can read that gap in the pottery. It's not difficult. So as you jump back, every place on the tell that we dig, as soon as we get underneath the Iron Age, we're in the Middle Bronze Age. But there's more. Not only did we find Tal el Hammam, the Middle Bronze Age city, but also there's a nearby city, Tel Kafrain, which is now being excavated, and my Greek colleagues tell me they're discovering Middle Bronze Age over there. Right around the corner, a few kilometers up the road, is Tal Nimrin, which is the second biggest of all of these sites, and it has already been excavated, and the Early Bronze, Middle Bronze, and then gap is confirmed there by excavation. So isn't that interesting? We have Tal al Hamam, Tal Kafrain, and a doublet. The sites necessary for Sodom and Gomorrah. We have Adma at Tal Nimrin, and then up the road we have these two little sites, which could be the Zeboim. And they all profile early bronze, middle bronze. Middle Bronze destruction, not reoccupied for at least five or six or seven centuries. All the sites have the same profile. Archaeologically speaking, it's one of the most exciting sites that you can imagine because there's so much to be figured out. There's so many things to discover. There's so much analysis to be, to be done. Uh, we're touching on the periods of the Israelite kings, of the Ammonite kings, and the people of the Bible who hung out in this area. It's very exciting, not just from the standpoint of, of the cities of the plain, but for later periods. Every turn of the spade at Tal el Hammam reinforces the occupational profile predicted for Sodom from, from the Bible.